from the culture of the American South, where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. Hold on, let me get it together over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me get this thing together while I let everybody get in the room. What's going on with y'all family? We're here, we're live with the late night tap in. It ain't too late, but with the tap in with Tariq, glad to have you guys tuning in. Waiting on everybody to pop on through. Saying what's up to all the regulars, Nikki the God, Nicety Girl, Re-Ups, um, a lot of people, War Talks, what's up brother Michael Warden? We are in here, glad to have everybody tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take calls shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take calls shortly. Just touch on a few things. Um, you guys, if you if you follow me, and first of all, let me thank everybody for tuning in to yesterday's broadcast. People like my the show I did last night on YouTube. A lot of people enjoyed it because I hadn't been on in like a week. So people really enjoyed last night's broadcast. If you haven't heard it, it's a good one at um, Tariq Radio on YouTube. That's my YouTube channel that everybody needs to follow. And um, y'all need to follow RootWorkStyle.com. We got the new RootWork Sense coming in a few weeks. So it's going to be a great holiday gift for the family. So y'all stay tuned for that. <clears throat> But a few things we want to touch on before we get some calls in the building. What's up, Sir Major? I see you, brother. Um, last night at the Hidden History Museum, some white Hispanic dudes came and they vandalized the building. Again, we've been vandalized there a few times with spray paint and graffiti and all of that. So we've, we've been hit a few times. Um first time was before we even opened the place. We talked about that. Um, there were a couple of times within the last uh, about two months. And last night, they did a big graffiti vandalism on our security gate. And people, these folks are being sent to our spot to do this. The police, they're very aware of it. They know what the folks are doing. We, we file reports, and they just simply don't do anything. It, you dig? It's the whole benign neglect thing. And this family, this goes back to why we say we got to get some kind of um, crime bill for us, because this is targeted harassment. This is targeted vandalism. It's not just random gangbangers, because... Um, the dudes, they pulled up in a damn Mercedes and did this shit. This wasn't like when, when when my assistant sent me the pictures this morning. I'm like, okay, let me go, let me go look at the cameras. Let me go look at the cameras. You know, I'm thinking it might have been just like some essays walking by or something like that. No, these people pulled this some white Hispanic dudes pulled up in a damn Mercedes, dude. If y'all look at the video, they pulled up in a damn brand new Mercedes, hopped out, tagged the place up, and then took pictures and drove off. And, um, you know, we, we got some of the license plate. Where my folks at who, um, who are good on that, um, license plate reverse, <clears throat> skip tracing y'all holler at me because we've been trying to holler at some investigators 
some private investigators about finding these cats based on their license plates because the police ain't gonna do shit. They're not gonna do nothing. So we're trying to find out who these cats are. And we put their license plates where the the license plate on my um Twitter. But this wasn't just some it weren't it wasn't no Mexican gangbangers. These folks were sent by somebody. And they made sure they took pictures to to show whoever um, they did this for that the job was complete. So these people are being sent to do this stuff. Now, who do y'all think sent these folks? Who do you guys think are sending these people to come vandalize our spot and just make a big display of vandalizing it? You, you see? And my thing is, this is clearly us being targeted. They're not targeting anything else around that area. They go specifically, they drive right up to our spot to specifically target that, a Black History Museum. Now, the media is quiet about it. Law enforcement is quiet about it. If you put out a cigarette in front of an Asian museum, it's going to be hate crime, hate crime, hate crime. Joe Biden is going to show up. If you even think about shaking a can of spray paint in front of a damn synagogue somewhere. Hate crime, hate crime, hate crime, off the rip. If somebody's going to get hit with a hate crime charge and the media is going to make a real big display about it. You understand? The, the These other groups, boy, uh, any inch of paint touches their building. Hate crime. No questions asked. They done vandalized our building about three or four times. Silence. You understand? Law enforcement don't do nothing. You dig? The media don't do nothing. And when folks don't do anything, that kind of gives the impression that they might be in on it. Yeah? When people sit up here and allow things to go on and you don't enforce the law and then you have some other operatives sitting online all day encouraging people to vandalize our building understand that you got a lot of people online who actually encourages the vandalism and they're allowed to do that you understand Y'all go look at some of the old Bucci Bear episodes. Do y'all know everything from the Bucci Bear episodes actually came true in real life? Take a real good look at the humor, but look at those old Bucci Bear episodes. Almost everything out of the Bucci Bear episodes actually came true. Really look and read between the lines on that stuff. And look at the characters involved in the satirical series. It's very ironic that a lot of the stuff came to light. Remember, the Bucci Bear cartoon came out before we opened the, the museum. And what was the Bucci Bear cartoon about? It's about the powers that be using operatives to sabotage the museum. That was what the whole series is about. Because I knew they were going to try that shit. I knew they were going to try to sabotage it. So we got ahead of it. And I knew some of the folks that they were going to use. And the techniques and strategies they were going to try to do to you. To sabotage and vandalize our spot. So... We got to keep our eyes open. Our eyes are open. Let me talk to Sir Major. Let me get some of the calls in here. You know, that's to be expected. What's up, brother Sir Major? First of all, I'm sorry that uh, the, the, the museum has been vandalized. Um, yes, sir. As anyone would would expect, or what I would say, uh, we have to do what every community does, and that's to notify the three-letter alphabet. And you have to continuously report each and every incident so that way right. our hate crimes can be tracked. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
So, so you, you have to do that. And I know most of us, we don't like calling it. They're already watching YouTube. You know that. So oh, you, yeah. you don't oh, have to worry yeah. about oh, your information being in the system. They already got that. The other thing is that, oh, yeah. uh, so, so yeah, we, 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 we're all going to be, uh, doing our part and we don't have to broadcast, but we all are going to do our part, um, to make sure that we all get justice for the museum. This is our museum and we're going to protect it like every other group protect their shit. The other thing I wanted to talk yeah, about is, I don't know if you've seen, uh, Tasha K recently did an interview with Brother Bilal, which is the formal assistant to, I'm sorry, okay, I thought my-, my Will was, Smith. Yeah, the foremost, yeah, to Will Smith. Did you see that? What were your thoughts? Yeah, that, <laughs> that was kind of heavy. Yeah. That was kind of heavy. But yeah, but thank you, brother. But yeah, yeah, I don't I don't want to get too too much in that. But yeah, and, and what the, the dude said, these have been rumors that's been floating around for a long time, so I'm not shocked. My my thing is this. My thing is this, and I, I hate repeating rumors. Um you know, this guy who was Will Smith's assistant said, you know, he's some Bucci cat action going on. And and I'm kind of, you know, I said, hey, I think it might be something like that going on. That that doesn't take away from Will or Jada. I, I really like Will. I think Will is a phenomenal guy. I think Will is a very talented brother. You know, there's no cap, no cut on Will, nothing. Now, I really, I respect Will and I like what Will does. I'm a big fan of Will. But, um, you know, there's been rumors, you know, been, you know, rumors are rumors. But, you know, it, it, if, if the rumors are true, that's his prerogative. You know, my man should be able to live and do what he wants to do. You know, if, if, if it's true, if it's not true, whatever. It's not, you know, that's not my business. But my thing is the assistant. Now, I kind of have a problem with that. You know, when you're somebody who's close up with somebody and then they put you on to a certain degree and the guy this assistant Bilal I think that's his name he was taking pictures with Will and Will said yeah I put you in my book and you know I, I gave you you know I'm, I'm blowing you up he was kind of saying that jokingly so this was somebody who Will gave clout to this is somebody who's you know who got certified by will and you got to watch out for that sometimes because sometimes when you certify certain people some people hang around you and then you'll try to put them on and the minute you put them on and certify them they will immediately flip they will flip on your ass and then be like well look here you better listen to me because i know him and he he told you i know him so now i got a tell all book Listen to me. You got now to me, to be honest, that's snakish. I don't like that. That's a snake ass move. So that's what I don't like about that. I don't respect what dude is doing. If you are close to Will like that, you telling his personal business, that's not cool. Somebody who entrusted you to be around them and their family. I don't respect that at all, to be honest. I don't respect it. I don't respect this nigga going on to Tasha K. I don't respect it, dude. We got a lot of bitch ass dudes out here. We got a lot of testosterone and soy products that has created a generation of moist, tender fuck niggas who do ho shit Ain't no integrity, ain't no manhood in some of these dudes. So there is no shaming of them. Back in the day, questioning a dude's manhood was something that would make a dude stand up right. Hey, hey, you know, I'm a man. You know, you, you know, you don't question my manhood. You, you dig? If a dude's manhood was in jeopardy, he would get up right and right and exact with his actions so that. His manhood wouldn't be in jeopardy. And, and the reason why back in the day wasn't no internet. You had to go out in the streets. You had to see people. So going out in the streets as a man, you had to move a certain way. You had to carry yourself in a certain manner. Because in order to be social, you had to go outside. It ain't like what we got now with kids just be in the house on an iPad and a PlayStation 24 hours. And they're socializing with people virtually. 
That's why you got so many fuck niggas. You ain't got to see nobody. So you being a bitch ass, saying bitch ass stuff and doing little sucker stuff, you ain't got to see nobody. You safe on your PlayStation. You're safe with the Twitter fingers. You're safe on YouTube. You, you, you dig? So that created a platform to let fuck niggas fester and, 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 and prosper being a fuck nigga. Whereas back in the day, when you hit them streets, you, you better have you better have the right reputation. You better not have the reputation of being a buster or a nigga saying real reckless stuff and not backing it up. If you say something back, and you, you would have to back it up. You, you dig? So manhood was tested in the physical realm all the time. So you had to carry yourself a certain way. You had to be a man. If you are a man and if you are moist, even moist dudes had to carry themselves a certain way. Even back in the day, the moist dudes could really get down and fight. You know, the moist dudes could fight and then get down harder than the other cats. Because if you said you had a hankering for bussy, you better stand on that. You had to fight for that bussy. You had to say, hey, look, this is who I am. You run up on me. I'm scratching y'all niggas. You did. You had to stand on bussy business. So whatever you did, you had to stand on it back in the day. Now you don't. You don't have to stand on nothing. You can be a whole fuck nigga. And and another thing, women. Let me talk to the women. Let me get on y'all. Y'all be giving your coochie to fuck niggas now. When y'all start doing that, ladies. I'm talking to y'all ladies, because that's another thing, y'all enable fuck niggas. Y'all give your coochie to whole buster-ass dudes. Y'all see bitch-ass niggas, and y'all been right over for a bitch nigga. What's wrong with y'all? Back in the day, women would get turned off by fuck niggas. Y'all be sitting up here kicking it with them. Ladies, what's going on with y'all? Is, is it slim pickings out here in the streets? What's up, ladies? Y'all need to call in and let me know what's going on. Some of y'all got a fuck nigga laying in the bed with you right now. Look at him. He's sitting over there with baby oil on his back. Yeah? Y'all got whole busters out here. So the game is real weird now. The game is super duper weird. So all of this chatty patty stuff, I, 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 I don't respect it, dude. I just don't. I don't respect no chatty patty nigga, these old tell all. I don't respect it, dude. That's a buster move. A man trying to eat off another man. I don't respect it. Nothing is more bitch made than that. And women, you know it. When you see your dude, ladies, if you see your dude trying to eat off another man, whining about another man, dry snitching or lie snitching on another man, and you sitting up there laying up with that bitch nigga, how you feel as a woman? You're like, I'm, I'm not being protected. I know you don't feel safe around these hoe ass niggas. I know you don't feel safe. That's why y'all be having little guns and shit all over the house. Y'all have guns all in your cleavage. Y'all don't feel safe around these buster-ass niggas. That's why y'all be having pepper spray and tasers in your purse. Because, you know, if something go down, then your fuck nigga ain't going to do nothing. You're going to have to defend him. <laughs> go. Go. Run, Rodney. I'm going to tase him. Run, Rodney. Run. i tase him, Rodney. You and your nigga getting beat up. Women, y'all need to be ashamed. You and your bitch nigga, y'all both getting y'all hair pulled by folks in the streets. Rodney, he got my hair. Charlene, he got mine too. Hell, help us both, Lord. Both y'all getting y'all hair pulled. Lord. Is that what y'all want out here in these streets, ladies? 
it's raggedy out here. Let me get some more callers. All right. Let's get Hustle Gold in here. Hustle Gold. What's going on, Tariq? What's up, Hustle Gold? How are you, brother? Man, I'm doing good, man. I just had a couple quick questions for you. Um, do you know the brother who actually did the um the cover to the city lights? It's like a um sound like an instrumental like jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was very good, yeah. Yeah, well, no, is there any way you can get get that on iTunes, man? Because honestly, bro, I feel like, man, that's a hit, man. And people don't sleep on that. I'm gonna land my plane. All right, thank you so much. I gotta find out who that brother is. You know, one of our mink slide songs, City Lights. You know, people would kind of make a little remix of it. And this brother made a jazz, kind of a jazz saxophone remix. That shit was tight as hell. I gotta find that. I gotta find it. Let's get Dexter in here looking like part of um cmb this brother looks like this brother got on the cmb <laughs> outfit like he about to steal somebody's dope what's going on right hey what's up flex hey man been a fan of here for a long time um see if you can send me the plate information you know i work in a sensitive area i can gather information for you i'll, I'll land the plate there my man, I will definitely do that. Let me follow you right now. Hold on, I'm following you. Now, Dexter, I just followed you. Send me a DM, all right, brother? All right, cool. Thank you, brother. Yes, indeed. Shout out to our non-FBA brother. And again, my, my, my people, if you can kind of run some license plates, um, holla at me. If you got um, some, some, some hookups on running some license plates, Y'all give me a holler so we can solve some things around here. All right. Let me see who we got. Well, we got a lot of people in here this evening, and I'm not going to be on too long because I still have to get to work tonight. Working on microphone check. We're working very hard to get that movie ready for the family. So you guys stay tuned for that. Let's get... um. Who is this? Miss D? What's up, Miss D? Hop on, Miss D. Waiting on Miss D. Miss D? Hi, Tariq. Hey, Miss D, how are you? I'm doing okay. I wanted to know, what? have you seen the movie Killers of the Flower Moon yet? If and I want to know your thoughts on it if you haven't spoke on it yet. You know, I haven't yet. I've, I've partially read the book, but I do want to see the movie. How was the movie? The movie is good. I went to okay. see, I took my client to my client moved here from LA. So I work for him now, a black guy. And um he wanted to go see it today. And it was it was it was a lot. It was it was really a yeah. lot. Okay, don't 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 give me no spoilers. Um, but I do want to go. I'm gonna see it. You know, I might look at it later on tonight if I'm if I'm not too sleepy. I did go to the movies though. I went to the movie. Took my boys to the movies the other night. I saw the stupidest ass movie ever. This movie is so damn dumb, and I didn't know what it was about. My son wanted to see it because you know my my kids be on YouTube and. They look at movie trailers all the time and they, you know, they see some horror movies and stuff. So they saw something that they wanted to see because it had these characters in it and it was a horror movie. I think it was called Five Nights at Freddy. Am I right? Is that the name of that movie? Five Nights at Freddy. Give me a thumbs up if that's the name of the movie. I think that's the name of it. Right? Y'all help me out. It's Five Nights at Freddy's. Have y'all seen this movie? This was the dumbest piece of shit movie ever. This movie was stupid as hell, man. Basically, man, just the premise was dumb as hell. It's like a horror movie. And, you know, they... Y'all remember Showbiz Pizza back in the day? You know, they had those little animatronic characters that would be on stage. How many of y'all remember Showbiz Pizza back in the 80s? Um, that's what it. Showbiz Pizza was like Chuck E. Cheese. It was basically the Chuck E. Cheese of the 80s. 
Uh, that's the best way I can describe it. You know how Chuck E. Cheese, they have the little animatronics. Showbiz Pizza had the same thing. That's where the, the concept came from. So this movie had like a, a, a an abandoned uh, pizza place that was kind of like Showbiz Pizza with these animatronics. And the fucking animatronics was possessed. <laughs> They were possessed by the spirit of some killer kids. <laughs> the fucking things were possessed and they were killing people. I'm like, what is this bullshit? The Chuck E. Cheese things was killing people. I'm like, man, if they don't stop with this bullshit. They were possessed by the spirit of some dead kids. It was, oh, God. Like, who wrote this mess, man? Oh, God. The, my kids loved it. They're like, this was good. And I'm like, all right, whatever you say. All right, the big Chuck E. Cheese things are killing people. <laughs> oh, God, this was stupid as fucking hell. And I'm like, man. Y'all can't outrun these things. People getting killed. These they they moving slow, and people are getting killed by some big clunky Chuck E. Cheese dolls. I'm like, all right, Hollywood. Well, that that SAG strike really really showed its fangs on that one, boy. That SAG strike must have been in full effect when y'all wrote that bullshit. Y'all got some some non union writers to write that. So. But anyway, let's get um, um, prophetic. All right, let's get prophetic xenophobe. Prophetic xenophobe. Where you at? Let's get prophetic. Where you at, brother? And while we're waiting on prophetic to get his phone together, let's get some more people in here. Let's get... um. So, white gentleman, I don't know your name, but hop on, man. What's your name? King. Yeah. What's up, King? Yeah, what's going on, Tariq? I'm good, King. How are you? Uh, I'm doing all right tonight. How are you? I'm good. Now, you Canadian? Where I hear a Canadian accent. Where are you from? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm from Vancouver. Oh, okay. So, what's on your mind, brother? Um, I actually had a question uh, regarding yeah. the production of your... Are you making Hidden in Colors 2? No, I made... Man, no. We made Hidden Colors 2 a decade ago. Oh, uh, well, I was, like, wondering the release on the, like, next Hidden Colors and if anything with the Israel versus Palestine, you know, debacle had anything involved with that. Because I know a lot um, of your no. directors are Jewish, correct? A lot of my directors, I'm not Jewish, and I direct all the films. Well, what are you talking you about? You married a Jewish woman, right? Oh, God. Well, y'all get your trolling together. Y'all don't Tariq, have any it's okay. I can save you from Zog. Why do you white supremacists never have any witty material? I can respect witty material. Y'all just say goofy shit, and that's the joke. It's... God is corny. I guess, Tariq. Y'all be more creative. Y'all, y'all don't, y'all, y'all, listen, listen. The reason why you guys have to rely on white supremacy as a welfare system because you don't have any kind of creativity and you wallow in mediocrity because white supremacy kind of cripples you psychologically. You, you can't think right. Y'all say the same little three or four words and that's supposed to be the joke. Jew, black, uh, whatever. Just It's not witty. Please Sir, be you're witty. rambling. Please, Sir, please, you're rambling. please be witty. God. Sir, you're rambling. Okay. Sir, ramble in your mother's bra straps and get that meth pipe. All right? Let me get some more people in here. God, boy, you white supremacists are not witty at all. And not like a good back and forth roasting, but God, y'all just, you know, you, you got to make it funny. Hell, like if T.S. Giselle can roast better than y'all, at least T.S. Giselle can kind of snap back with something kind of witty. That's why I can, 
you know, I, I have T.S. Giselle on sometimes, even though, you know, T.S. Giselle gets trollish, but sometimes T.S. Giselle can come back with some good snaps. Like the other day, T.S. Giselle, well, she's T.S. Giselle said I look like a look like a broke Montel Jordan or some shit. Now that was funny. I respect any you, know, you you bring some humor to it. I can respect it. You know, I just saying white supremacists just be saying goofy shit and it, it don't be witty. It's like, oh, let me just show you how lame I can be, and it just. It just crashes the the fun and the energy. Ugh. God, their corniness just sullies the room. All right, let's get um, because we've got a lot of people in here. All right, let's get um, Otis Glenn, Otis Glenn, or Ot's, Otis or Ot's. All right, Ortiz. Yo, what's up, Tariq? What's going on, brother? How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Peace to the family, man. Um, yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I, you know, I wanted to just touch on uh, the documentary, the hip-hop documentary, man. Um, I, I heard you say a word a while back. You you said uh, hostile, you know, and uh, the hostility that's coming off some of these dudes. The tone, the matter-of-fact tone that they use in you know, with the creation, the hip hop, and one thing that I think people forget about with Fat Joe is the um, the versus battle with Ja Rule. You know, he lost that versus battle. Nobody really talks about it, and it really wasn't even close. You know, it wasn't mm. even close, man. It wasn't even close. And um, I think his his tone has gotten a lot worse lately because he just in in him and Buster Rhymes' mind, they look at themselves on the level of a J and Anaz and people like that, but they, you know, he's just, Fat Joe is not that guy. You know what I mean? When it yeah. comes to rapping. Yeah. You know, he's just not that guy. There you go. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. But yeah, you know, that's why we, with the film, man, we, we're clearing up a lot of stuff that should have been cleared up. And, um, and it was so important that we got this done on a grassroots level because it is the corporate structure that's the main one pushing the lies. Bakari, what's up, brother? Tariq, can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you? Man, I'm pretty good, man. Man, I've been trying to catch up with you, but I want to double down. I got a couple uh, things. I want to double down on that Fat Joe thing because, man, they've been letting him get away with saying the N-word, and I don't feel that, man. Like, you want to kind of, you know, ride on the um bandwagon and try to do it when it's hip but you know what I'm saying you playing with our pain though that's what I don't like about it. it's like man step back because even though what happened to the in the holocaust it don't hit me the same as it hit them so I don't play with them so this is like right. the same thing so I, that's why I'm fool with Fat Joe with all that trying to be hip stuff the second thing man is uh <clears throat> do you think it would be feasible to put together some type of program that would it even be worth it that can run you through and get you to where you are FBA. You know what I mean? So you certify FBA so we can have our own own space, own own everything, own own cards or whatever you want, however you want to do it. Just, you know, uh, kind of simplify it a little more and get everybody certified. Is, is that even something? No, because no, hell, you ain't there. <laughs> Thank you, brother. But then that, you know, your lineage is your lineage. You don't have to sign up for your own lineage. I mean, shit, you do. You know, you, what makes you a foundational black American is that you're born into the lineage. You, if you don't have an immigrant background, if you, if you um, you know, your family can be traced back to slavery here in America, then you are a foundational black American. It's that simple. You ain't got to get a, a library card or you ain't got to get a piece of paperwork or nothing. Now, when we're talking about reparations, now if we're trying to implement a specific program that's going to distribute the compensatory resources to us, then we need something to say, hey, this person is this person, this person's paperwork checks out, that person's paperwork checks out. <clears throat> so we got to watch out for that too. Because now when, when it gets to the implementation stage, that's what we got to watch out. Because if we get something like another Freedmen's Bureau where everybody has to be verified, 
Oh, uh, that's where we're going to see a lot of trick bag stuff come in. So we got to be very, very cognizant of that. All right. Let's get um Lou Fax in here. Lou Fax. Mr. Lou Fax. Tariq, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm good. Lou Fax, how are you? Hey, man, you know you to go. Hey, I got to, um, so, so you know what's crazy, right? We talking about delineation. So I was talking yeah. to, um, a black Nova Scotian, right? These black people that have been in Nova Scotia since, you know, uh, the, the Underground Railroad and their majority descendants of black loyalists, the ones that fought in the 1812 war, right? So I finally yeah. got in touch with them, right? Because, you know, they delineated and two, uh, they got their own flag similar to the um, to the uh, Juneteenth flag. And then they got their own Juneteenth Day, which is October 2nd, right? So oh, wow. she, okay. she sent me an email, right? So in the 80s, so you know how like uh Jesse Jackson changed Black America to um to African American in the 80s, right? So they yeah. had the same thing in Nova Scotia. So these are the black people that have been in Nova Scotia since the 1800s. These uh, black Americans okay. that migrated there. So they was black Nova Scotians all the way up to the 80s, right? When they had the immigration and stuff. And then they switched it to African Nova Scotians. So they're currently delineating, they got their own flag, and they're um so Hold on, let me read it, what she sent me uh, in the email. So before it was African Nova Scotian, they changed it. So now they switched it. They said, this is our definition. So this is what they're switching it to. So African Nova Scotian indigenous blacks are descendant people who descend from free people and enslaved black planters, black loyalists, black refugees, maroons, and black people who inhabit the original 52 land bases black communities in the part of Nova Scotia. So she was basically telling me how, like, how immigration got weaponized against them. Uh, they include African Nova Scotians with black Nova Scotians. And, like, it's just the same, literally the same shit that's going on in America. And when she told me this, I'm like, what the fuck? They, they literally going through the same shit we going through in America. So yeah, yeah. I, 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 I wanted to tap you in with the, with the lady. She a black Nova Scotia, man. She know all the history and it's crazy, but yeah. My man, my man, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right, Shyam, what's your name? Shy, Shyam, hop on. Shyam, hop on. All right, Shyam, let's get you to spit. And if you're not ready, Shyam, we're going to get some more people. Let's get um, Cyber Warrior in here. Since Cheyenne ain't speaking, let's get Cyber Warrior. All right. Cyber Warrior. How you doing, Tariq? What's up, brother? How are you? Um, I'm FBA. I'm from uh, Savannah, Georgia. I just wanted to tap in about the Moors because there's always some white supremacists talking about how the Moors weren't black. But what they don't know is after the Moors were kicked out of Spain, white people still wanted the Moors around. So in all the European courts, they created a position called the Moor of the Royal Court. And this tradition went all the way to the 1800s. And when Russia wanted to modernize, they started having Moors of the Royal Court in their royal Russian czar's courts. So we actually have photographs of these Moors. They're in the same mm. Moorish tradition as the statues that you see with all the fancy gear. And they were soldiers. They were uh, intelligence. They were used in the military. So we have pictures of the Moors who are still in the Moorish tradition all the way back from when the Moors fell in the late 1400s. So anybody who says that the Moors weren't black, all throughout Europe, in every single court, there's a position called the Moor of the Royal Court. And there's paintings of these black people. But we have photographs, which is most important, all the way until the Russian Empire fell in the early 1900s, they had Moors of the Royal Court. And that's all I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Man, thank you so much. And, you know, 
the, you know, the white supremacists are very well aware. They know good and well the Moors were black. They know that. They know that more than anybody. But you got to understand, the white supremacists, it's all about I'm white and I say so. Um, no matter how much evidence you bring, and you go to Europe and all the Moorish stuff, all the documents showing these people being jet black, they are very well aware. You, you just got to understand how the white supremacists think and how they lie and why they lie. The white supremacists lie very naturally. And it's really the only defense mechanism they have in order for them to psychologically maintain the false um, um, concept, but a very real concept. It's false, but it's real because they implement punishment based on a falsehood that they're superior, but they basically know how to implement, implement military power based on race. So there's a savagery there that they try to finagle into it being a source of superiority, of innate superiority. Now, they have military superiority, but they don't have an innate superiority, not a genetic superiority. But the thing is, they implement that system onto us, and you have to implement the system psychologically first, and... That means not giving credit to black people for the things that we've done globally. So when it comes to black people teaching whites, that narrative has always had to be erased. So anytime you look at advanced black civilizations or advanced black technology or black creations, it always has to be minimized or shared. That's why the ancient Egyptians, they try to make them into Middle Easterns like modern Middle Easterns, which are the Arabs. They try to make them all Arabs now. And the ancient Egyptians look nothing like those folks. They were black people. When you talk about the Moors, they have to claim that they were really Berbers. Well, they weren't really black, black, and they were Arabs. They got to play this little game because they would have to admit the truth and say, <clears throat> and say hey, there's these black people who were teaching us up here. <clears throat> They're doing the same thing with the hip hop conversation. When you talk about hip hop now, because it's a positive and it's being corporatized now, well, it was blacks and Latinos and Asians and other people creating it. So it's not just a black thing. So now the, you have to minimize it. So we have to stop allowing people to do that. That's on us.